Hey guys, Curious Hobbyist here. Welcome back to my channel. I just started using a game engine called Unity recently, and I came across one of its linked tutorials called Rollaball. So today, I'm going to be talking about my experience with following that tutorial, including customizations and content that I added to the game itself, and building the app at the end. First, I downloaded the tutorial project and opened it. And this took a few seconds. Once it was loaded, I opened the tutorial instructions in my web browser. And just into the first tutorial video, I noticed they didn't seem to be using the tutorial project at all, because the prepared project had all the resources from the final game, and this didn't. So I thought I would try creating an empty project and following the tutorial using only that project. Again, it took a few seconds to load. Once it loaded, I started creating the game. Firstly, it shows you how to create a stock Unity plane. It also shows you how to position the plane at origin. Well, I discovered that I could copy and paste the plane, and then move and scale it by changing its transform values. Using this method, I was able to create more platforms. Then it shows you how to color those planes, by creating a material, coloring it, and then dragging it onto the planes. But I noticed that I could choose my own color for these materials, so I'm going to go with some red. Then it shows how to add and position a Uni stock sphere model, and add a physics component and script to it. Speaking of scripts, I was able to write all the scripts by following the tutorial, and they were all correct and had no compiler errors in the end. Even though I have pretty much no knowledge of C-sharp scripting yet, and still feel like I barely know what anything does. So then you need to edit the speed of this player in the speed field that the script created. So with that, let's run the game by entering play mode. As you can see, it runs well, and responds to WASD or arrow key controls. Then I noticed that I could change the game view to a different angle by editing the main camera's position and rotation. So let's make it diagonal. Then I created another platform and moved it forwards and then downwards. And I noticed that when I moved it down far enough, it kind of looked like it was placed to the right of the other platform, when in reality, it was moved downwards. Because of that, it looks a bit smaller so I'll have to scale it. That looks a bit better, but then I had to edit the position a bit, because Unity's scaling process starts from the center of what you're scaling. That looks perfect. But in the game view, it's a different story. So let's hit play and test. We can see that the illusion shifts out of perspective when you fall down and move around, so I wondered if maybe I could fix that problem somehow. I went to the camera settings again, and I tried changing the projection setting to orthographic. I immediately noticed a change in how the game view looked. Orthographic projection is basically a type of camera projection mode with no perspective. This also means that no matter how far or near something is from the camera or from the center of the game view, it looks exactly the same. As a result, the platform I just created looks larger because it is larger. So that means I have to do more scaling and positioning. There, but I can still see that there's a shadow on the platform. That might be a clue about this illusion. I'm not saying this definitely needs to go away, but I do want to try to remove it. So I tried editing the directional light. But at certain rotations, the game looked a bit dark. And as I add more platforms, I think there may be shadows no matter what. At certain rotations though, there were little to no shadows on the current platforms in my current project. But I'm going to attach it to the camera, just in case. So I continued following the tutorial, customizing the game, and adding extra content, which brings me to my final result. Firstly, you can see that I didn't add the wall in the front. Normally, there will be four walls around the main playing field, but because I put the first platform we fall to at the front, I skipped adding the wall in the front. I also want to add some music now. To add a file to the project view, you can simply drag it to the project view. So I'm adding an mp3 file of kicked up pumps by Audionautics. If you select the audio file, you can see some import settings for it in the inspector, such as quality and stereo options, but I'm just going to leave them as they are for now. You'll also need to create an audio source, under Create, Audio, Audio Source. Then you'll have to drag the audio file from the project view into the audio slot in the audio source. I'm also going to child the audio source to the player, because I want the audio to stay with the player. The tutorial also shows you how to add collectibles and to program an ending message that appears when a certain number gets large enough, and how much larger it becomes when you get each one. In the tutorial, it just says, you win. But I decided to make it a lot longer. 
The message is tied to this text element, but because it was so long, I had to edit the width and height of the text element and the font size of the letters. So now, let's test our game again. I also added some additional 3D text elements and edited their position to my liking. While I was adding the platforms, I was really reminded of a game called Naya's Quest. That game is full of these kinds of illusions, but in this game, you use a cross-section scanner to find out where you actually need to go next. But in this game, on the other hand, you don't have any clue where you need to go, and it's way easier to fall off. And when you do fall off, the only way to replay it is to exit and enter play mode. This brings me to the last part of the tutorial, building the app. To export your game as an application, go to File, then either Build and Run, or Build Settings. If you choose Build Settings, you'll get a window like this. You can then choose a platform that you want to build for. And if you haven't installed the required module, this is where you can do that. Now, if you want more settings, click on Player Settings. This will show various other settings in the inspector, such as window and resolution settings, and icon settings. Speaking of which, I've created a simple 128 pixel image using paint, and added it to my project. This means I can now select it as the icon image. Okay, let's finally build the application, and then run it. The music works, and the app runs exactly the same as it did in the Unity project. But these illusions are hard to pass, even for me, as I know what's coming. Another thing that makes this difficult is the perspective. You can't tell how far you need to move when you fall. Another problem is that if you do fall, the game has absolutely no checkpoints or even a position reset. This means you have to quit the entire app to reset your position. Ideally, I would want the position of the ball to be reset when you get to a certain level below the platforms. But I cannot do this with the little knowledge of C-sharp I have yet. Nonetheless, I think this is really cool, and I want to add more platforms to this game. The Unity stock shapes do give you some resources to work with, but positioning and rotating them can be a bit time consuming. And it's just a few shapes, so that can be limiting. There is a popular modeling program called SketchUp, and it's way easier to model than that. So what if I could use that for level design? Well, you can, and here's how. First, you'll obviously need to design a model. For instance, I designed a simple spiral staircase. To do this, I created a circle and divided it into 24 slices using the line tool following its 24 sides as a guide. And then I used the pull tool to pull each slice up one inch higher progressively until I got all the way around. Second, you'll need to export the file. So go to File, Export, 3D Model. Now, choose the DAE Collada format and confirm the export. Once it's finished, add the file to the project view. To add the model into your level, drag it from the project view into the scene view. Next, uncheck the active box on the model camera component. This will prioritize the Unity main camera again. Edit the position to your liking, and add a Mesh Collider component. Mesh Colliders also come pre-attached on Unity's stock shapes. The role of these Mesh Colliders is to prevent the player from falling through them. Let's hit play again. As you can see, the collider works. Another option in SketchUp Make is to export your model as a 3DS file. So why export in Collada? That's because DAE files have previews. Not only that, but the previews allow you to look around the model to see how your export went. Whereas 3DS files have no preview and can't be opened. Now, let's try adding a 3DS file to Unity in the same way we did with the Collada. This reveals two issues. Firstly, one side of each surface is not there. Secondly, the player falls through it even though I added the Mesh Collider in the same way as with the Collada, so definitely do not export and use 3DS files. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, feel free to like it, share with family and friends, and subscribe for more interesting content. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, 
click the bell that appears after you subscribe. And to check out my channel, click here. I have more videos that I think you would find interesting to watch. If you have questions or requests, you can let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.